impacting, afflicting black boys, black men. So talk about that need, that imperative to focus exclusively on black boys and black men for this particular project. Well, as you know, I've gotten my start here in the city of Philadelphia as a certified school psychologist with the school district of Philadelphia, which I was for five years before I resigned. And the primary reason that I resigned is as the youngest at that time, I was the youngest black school psychologist for the school district of Philadelphia. My job often became being an advocate for black boys, both of whose teachers and parents believe that they had problems that could not be corrected without medication or special education. And I quickly saw how both special education and ADHD and the medication that comes along with it were being used as weapons of mass destruction, not just in Philadelphia, but across America's public and charter school system. And so stop it right there at first point. I always think about my experience in school when um, talking about how the school systems negatively affect black boys. But I, I'm not just, I don't just think about my experience, but I think about the experience that I've said, I saw a lot of other black boys have and how a lot of young black boys fell through the cracks and fell through the cracks early. And you know how you are young, you are young, you're a child and you are seeing certain people advance and certain people not advance, certain people being held at certain positions, certain people not even coming back to school anymore. And you start to wonder what's going on. Back then, you really didn't have a, have any real idea what's going on now as adults and having all the information that we had. I've always hated school. I always thought that school was a just a oh, damn waste of time, to be honest. Like, I thought you know, they sent us there seven, it felt like seven, eight hours a day, and we was really there wasting our time. But then listening to the information that he's given and all the information that we've gathered over the years and what we know happens, especially the young black boys within the school system, I, I'm still flabbergasted at how many black people are still sending their kids, putting their kids in these school systems and, and, certain people are still in positions to where it's not the best position for them to, to maybe produce a child now, but they still do it. And so now you're forced to put the child into this same school system that you hate. Cause you, you all know, we see people that we know who preach the pro blackness and the consciousness and they hate the school system. They hate the school system that, but that's the one that's raising their kids cause they don't have the resources to put their kids or they don't have the organization within their communities to put their kids in the, school system that they need to put them into. And one of the greatest things about what Dr. Umar is articulating is we get to, we get to really see what the hell was really happening to black boys. We get to really see how the hell these schools, black and white teachers were treating these black boys, but a lot of these white women teachers as well, but a lot of these black and white teachers, cause I went to all black schools and nah, they, a lot of young black boys did not get the care they needed. They fell through the cracks, all these things. And now when he talk about the special education, he talking about all these uh, medications and the things that you see that, that they put these damn kids on. And then you wonder why these kids not really reaching their full potential. And, but, but it's like a cycle because the parents keep making these decisions that may not be the best decisions at the time to have these children. And then you got to put these kids in these system. And then once you put them in this system, you got these teachers and these people in the system who don't give a damn revolving. And it's like, well, if you don't like the system, at what point we're going to do something different? Because I understand calling out the system and, and letting everybody know what's going on. But on the other hand, we got to have an alternative as well. We got to do something different about it too. So that's my first thought. I had to, I'm on one too, so I had to get a, a little bit of vent too. So, but go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> go ahead, Pat. Um, I think about it in terms of like, cause you know, I have a, a, a my oldest son is autistic, and I work with kids, and um, mm -hmm. 
one of the things we got to be honest about is you know the school system is designed to, to to educate a specific type of person in a specific type of way um and if your child is not that specific type of person that was me they're going to use the tools at their disposal to bring your child as much in compliance as they can um while simultaneously pushing them as far um into the outskirts as they can to continue to work with the kids that are that type of person and in a lot of cases that means drugs and i think one of the problems in the community that we have to deal with is the fact that a lot of people don't take responsibility for the education of their children um and they don't they don't want to accept the blame um really for having children if we want to be honest about it um and so it, it becomes convenient for them to just say oh my child has uh adhd and or they have you know autism or they have this or they have that and they need medication you know what i'm saying and it's one thing to acknowledge that your child has a, a, a certain condition it's a whole other thing to get on board the medication train um and i think the medication then becomes the blame and the scapegoat for why your child isn't performing up to far when the truth might just be that your child is not that particular type of person that the schools are designed to educate and the reality of it is most boys are not right um, black boys especially you know we're hands-on learners we learn by doing we learn by uh a lot of us learn by in-depth conversation to me school was just too slow i would read all of the textbooks yeah. that i got within two months of school starting i would literally go home and read the textbooks and then spend the rest of the year digging in my nose like <laughs> like not caring um I didn't care and I had hard and fast rules. I was very disciplined about my rules. One rule was I don't do school work at home. <laughs> and I told you this story, Joe. I told and I told my teachers that. Like, look, first week of school. And um, this started in middle school, uh, sixth, seventh grade. First week of school. I don't do homework. What you mean you don't do homework? Someone <laughs> would give homework that day to test me. I don't do homework and I don't do tests that don't count for the grade. <laughs> and like that was my rule it was stubborn it was stupid it was pig headed but i was very disciplined about my rules yeah um and they tried to medicate me and they tried to do a lot of other things to me uh luckily my parents weren't going for any of that but i do see it a lot now working with kids anytime a kid is in an environment where uh we have to do uh lectures or something like that where they just got to sit still for a prolonged period of time if the kid can't do it i've even had i've even heard parents mention well do you think uh medication should be do you think like i've heard parents bring it up so you know i think that's just one of the things without getting too far ahead of the clip that we gotta we really gotta take stock of is as a black community we got to understand that the, the public school system is designed to teach a certain type of person in a certain yeah. type of way and if our kids aren't that we need to explore non-public non-traditional means of educating our children because they're out there and they're very easy to engage in yeah um i'm gonna take a slightly different perspective not and I and I totally agree with both with both of you said in terms of you know the issues concerning the system and how it uh is not designed for our children. You know, um but you know, we're black, there's no getting around that. And just like you said, Pat, we we're tactile learners, you know, kinesthetic, if you will. We learn with our hands. We learn with our, by doing. We learn by seeing it being done. We don't. Uh, we don't necessarily learn from being lectured to. Lectures are great once you sort of have command of the information or command in terms of like the the mechanics of the information. But until then, you know, you need to learn the process, like teaching somebody how to work on a car. 
by showing them instruction or talking to them in the class. And then the first time they actually work on the first time they actually work on the cars, the, the first time they actually see a real engine. You know what I'm saying? You don't learn it that way. We don't learn it that way. We're hands on. But I want to go into something else, too. This system has always been designed to destroy black boys. From the very beginning of chattel slavery. You, you know, before 1811, you know, 90% of Africans who were brought to this country were brought here. They were males. They were black males. And their spirit had to be broken so that they wouldn't rise up to become, you know, an effective to effective opposition to the powers that be. So, you know, they say, you know, they say it's easier to destroy the boy than kill the man. So you kill the man, you kill the boy before he becomes a man. So spiritually speaking, they kill us. And when you see, uh, you, you go historically through um, the different laws and policies put in place, like I said, the actual buck breaking that took place on plantations, um, the constant, constant beratement, admonishment, disrespect, you know, even on plantations, black males didn't even run the black part of that plantation. It was always the big mammy, you know, who was always in charge. Uh, you take that back to the classrooms and you see, that, uh, you know, black boys are loaded with sugar in the morning with cereals and things of that nature and then told to sit still for the rest of the day in the classroom. It's been proven that black children learn better when you have a, cer a cipher or a circular classroom. But yet and still the classrooms are lined up, uh, uh, the desks are put in straight lines, which, by the way, when I found out why that happens was very interesting. I'll tackle that later. <laughs> um. So systemically, uh, bought black, uh, you know, we're put into this position, and you got to understand something: white feminism has only white feminism only exists to destroy black men. I think we need we don't really look at it because we get caught up in the um, the 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 you know uh, what they call revisionist history of feminism and how about women's suffrage, but women suffrage. You know, Susan B. Anthony, all these other people that started women's suffrage and, and the, those movements, they started those movements because black men had roles uh, after the Civil War. Black men were able to step into spaces that white women weren't allowed to step into. Home ownership, the ability to vote, own businesses, and things of that nature, the business, the ability to hold public office. And so that was the real um, engine behind feminism. And then you look at the school systems. 91 percent of the teachers are white women. You think white women want your black son to compete with their white son when white women are the champions of their white boys? And now let's take it back to the personal responsibility. I don't want to be too long winded. Black people have, for the longest, submitted to white authority. And black people, being uh, as we always talked about it, um, what do we call it when you don't mature all the way? Arrested it, development. Uh, mm -hmm. Huh? Arrested development. Arrested development. The arrested development of black people have us dealing with the system from the perspective of children. No one to be responsible for standing up and, and actually being accountable for the conditions in our community, even though it's not it's not 100% our fault, but we're the only ones that, that are in position or have the will or need to have the will to do something about it. And then, you know, uh, the Milligram experiment, it speaks to the fact that when you have a people who look up to people with authority, that they respond in a very submissive way. That's what they did. The Milligram experiment was based on uh, the Nuremberg trials that tried to, the Nazi war criminals, and they kept asking the soldiers, well, why did you do it if you knew it was wrong? They said, I, I just, I was just following orders. And I think a lot of black people are in that perspective where they're just following orders and they don't believe in their own ability to lead their own people. Yeah. The way we're going about continuing to operate is only to our detriment. Like you just say, like you, you said, 91% of, of teachers are white women. 
we already talk about how we don't like the school systems. What we what we we can articulate fully what we don't like. People can tell you all the issues that they've had, whether whether you are an educator or even the, the parents or the students. Hell, we've been through these school systems. Hell, I've been I've come from Florida. We got some of the worst school systems in the country. We ain't really learned nothing, right? But this is the primary way that we are being educated. And so that's why I said what I said earlier is, okay, family planning is very important. Let's just be real. Let's, let's, let's not saw shoe shit. Let's just be straight real. Family planning is very important, right? And so on one hand, you don't like the schools. You wouldn't put your children in these schools. On the other hand, you're going to have a baby when you don't have the resources to put your child in the proper educational space that you want to. That don't make sense. It don't make sense. And, and don't be the person that say, well, people make mistakes, make mistakes. So let's not even go down that road. Just in case you try to go down that road, let's not even go down that road. But what I am saying is we got to be more intentional and deliberate about making good decisions and good actions, especially if we're talking about being the best versions of ourselves and proving things here in black America and proving things within our own houses and our own lives, the, the actions that we take as individuals have to be better because you can see how they affect other people, especially your children. If you don't want your damn children in the system, don't put them in the system, but don't put yourself in a position to where you got to put your kids in the system because the system don't give a black children, especially young black boys. Yeah.